What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here with Cheesehead TV, coming to you live on Wednesday afternoon. Just finished up uh, Cheesehead TV live trivia. If you didn't hop on board today, we'll be live again tomorrow. Hope you can stop by, have a lot of fun. Something to take your mind off everything going on in the world at the moment. But I'm always here to talk Packers with you guys. Unless it was yesterday, which I had to skip out on because the world is crazy. But I'm here today to let you know the 2020 Cheesehead TV Draft Guide dropped last night. You guys should definitely pick it up if you haven't yet. If you pre-ordered it, it's available in your account on the website. You'll find that in the upper right-hand corner of the homepage or any page, really. You'll see your screen name, your account name. Click on that. You'll see the files tab in your account. Click on that. You'll see the PDF. Click on that. It'll download. Uh, and if you haven't bought it yet, what are you waiting for? The draft is still many weeks away. You got lots of time to bone up on all that hot draft content with a Packers angle. Again, it's the only Packers um, specific draft guide out on the market. Lots of people worked really hard. Lots of great content. Pick it up. You're going to love it. Hello to everybody in the comments. How are you guys? Tim, what's up? Dad. Nobody wants me as their father, not even my own three children. Michael, do you think Sterling Sharp was better than T.O. in their primes? Yes. Like it's not even close. Like T.O. was a great receiver. Don't get me wrong. Sterling Sharp is one of the greatest of all time. Would have been etched in stone, walked in on first ballot in the Hall of Fame if he had had a complete career not shut down by injury. Again, T.O. is great. Not slighting T.O. at all. But Sterling Sharp was a man among boys. Um... Nags, can you see an improvement in our run defenses here? Zach, I mean, a lot of ball game left. It'll be interesting to see what kind of pieces they add, uh, if any, either in free agency or the draft. Certainly, I think they need to improve up front. Um, but I do wonder how much of it is scheme-related and or dependent on Petten maybe switching his philosophy a little bit. We all know he likes to defend the pass. He's the quickest way is to you know, fly rather than run. and. Uh, you know, there's some validity to that in the NFL. Obviously, the liberalized passing rules even becoming more liberal. I understand leaning that way, but we saw plenty of teams run all over the Packers last year. I do think they need more talent, especially up front around Kenny Clark. They got to hope, I guess, that Kiki develops to the place where he is starting over uh, Tyler Lancaster, definitely Montrevious Adams, and maybe even displacing Dean Lowry, even though they paid Lowry last year. Uh, they just they need better play up front against the run. There's no doubt about that. Jack Carpenter, thanks so much for the super chat. Who is your favorite Packer player ever who is widely considered bad? <laughs> I love the offseason. Um, hmm. Considered bad. Who is considered bad? Um, Travis Jervy? He wasn't very good, and I love him. So I guess that'll do. Too bad we didn't sign Jimmy Jern again. Looks like the Texans got a good deal. Yeah, I didn't see the uh, I didn't see the numbers on it. I know it was a one year deal. Uh, can't say I'm surprised. You know, it doesn't look like they're going to be doing much of anything remaining in free agency unless they can get say a dirt cheap um, veteran minimum deal, which I don't think as cheap as it was for Jern again. I can't imagine it was that. God, I don't want to be working right now. Thanks for doing this, Nagler William. Anytime, man. Hello. Hmm. Given that the Smith brothers have three years left on their deals, what would you say is a reasonable timetable for Gary getting significant playing time uh, this year? There's zero question. Yes, they have three years left on their deals. Yes, they played a incredible amount of snaps last year. It made a ton of sense to keep Gary on the sideline, but you invested a top 15 pick in Gary Yes, you have five years of control, but the only way you're going to find out what you have is by playing him. It's all well and good to have him there on the sidelines, all well and good to see him do things in practice, but you're not going to know what you have in that investment until you get him on the field. And they certainly didn't do that last year. And it doesn't serve him well at all to keep him on the sideline that much. I understand you paid these guys and they're being productive, so of course you're going to play them a lot. But make no mistake about it. Patton has got to find ways of getting all three on the field at the same time 
if not, you know, doing a strict one for one, putting in Gary for Z, which is probably the the switch that will happen when uh, Z has to take a break. Austin, thanks so much for the super chat. Just got a Zadarius Smith jersey. Well done. Whose jersey do I get next? I already have Favre, Rogers, Clay Matthews, Jair Alexander, Cobb, Jordy, and Star. Well done on the part Star jersey. Um, I would get Kenny Clark. That's just me. Either Kenny Clark or David Bakhtiari, but I'd wait to see if David signs his extension first. Uh, could Tremont come back on a veteran deal? I imagine you mean a veteran's minimum deal. I mean, he could. Would you want to do that, though? Put your body through all that at 38 years old, the vet minimum? Maybe vet minimum with a lot of possibility for incentives to kick in along the way. That's a possibility, no doubt about it. Green Bay doesn't need to draft a defensive tackle. They just need to play Kingsley Kiki more. I mean, I agree with that second part, but I wouldn't be opposed to drafting a defensive tackle. As Ted Thompson used to say, the good Lord only made so many. And the more talent you have up there, the more you can dominate with the 49ers. Now, obviously, they were picking high in the draft, and that helps. But, I mean, that defense is so formidable, and they don't have to blitz a whole lot because they control things up front. You're not going to do that with Tyler Lancaster and Dean Lowry. I'll tell you that. Uh, today sucks. How are you, Nags? Man, I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. Man, I tell you what, these days, each one of them is like Groundhog Day being shut in, etc. I get it, man. I feel you. We're here to talk some Packers, right? Get your mind off of it. I took a walk around the block earlier today. Gorgeous spring day here in New York, which gets you kind of in your head because you're like, God, it's so gorgeous out, but I can't do anything. I just walk around the block and come right back here. But uh, I hear you, man. I feel you. We're here. We're all going to get through it together. Like Bill Belichick said, if you haven't seen his video, go check it out. It's great. Uh, most overrated head coach in Packers history. How can you be overrated if you coached the Green Bay Packers? I mean, even the worst coach, even Dan Devine is an amazing coach because he coached the Green Bay Packers. In your opinion, who is the better player, Kenny Clark or B.J. Raji? Whoo, Jose. Well, they're different, uh, but I'd probably give the nod to B.J. Just slightly. Although I love Kenny. You guys know I do. But don't forget... Kenny is still very, very young. He still has a lot of room for growth. Uh, do you think they have to jump Philly at 21 to get a wide receiver in the first? No, absolutely not. I'd be absolutely shocked if they did. Now, unless it's somebody they completely covet slash crave and Gutekunst has to have this prospect, I don't see that happening, but that could exist, right? Uh, some kind of feeling from him for a certain prospect, then... Maybe it's a possibility, but in a draft where you've got the deepest wide receiver class in decades, if not ever, moving up at all for a wide receiver doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, again, you, with the draft, you never say never, but I'd be I'd be absolutely shocked if they did that. Can Jerry Gray fix Josh Jackson? Sam, he'll have to be on the squad for that to uh, possibly occur. And who knows if Josh Jackson makes it out of draft weekend. I mean, I got to think that's the, the come to Jesus moment, right? If they're going to trade him, that would probably happen over the draft. So stay tuned. You know, that said, if he is on the 53 and, or even the 90 trying to make the 53, uh, we'll see what a veteran presence can do. I mean, there's no question that Josh Jackson has been a disappointment, Certainly seen flashes of his ability. I don't think there's any question that he can do it athletically. Uh, for whatever reason, hasn't put it all together yet. Maybe some veteran coaching will help him do that. I wouldn't be surprised to see them move up for a QB if one is falling that they like. I would be surprised, uncultured. Um, but again, it's all in the eye of the beholder. It depends on who um, who he's in love with and how much how strong that com commitment and conviction is. Um, clearly, it wasn't enough to try and stay ahead of Denver last year to get Drew Locke. Uh, but if it is somebody he absolutely loves and wants and covets and thinks is the answer at quarterback for the next decade, then, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Ryan, thanks so much for the super chat. Who do I want to see in the Monday Night Football booth? I want to see Riggins back, man. That'd be so great. Bring him back. You know what? I'm one of the few people who enjoyed Dennis Miller in the booth. 
Everybody hated Dennis Miller. He was fucking hilarious. I'll never forget the Monday Night Football game when the Packers were playing the Panthers and some crazed fan ran onto the field and they didn't show him at first. And then all of a sudden the, they caught because he came into the huddle. He was literally on the middle of the field and they replayed it. And there was a slow-mo of this guy. And he had wild hair and his eyes were all bugged out. And he was, it was crazy looking. And Miller, oh, like not missing a beat, says, when we see the guy here and oh my God, that's my agent. It was hilarious. I love Dennis Miller. I thought he was great. So I'd love an unconventional selection in Monday Night Football booth. I'd be all for that. I mean, who that would be? Put Dave Chappelle in there. How great would that be? Obviously, that's not going to happen. Realistically, I mean, you'd want Tony Romo, and ESPN clearly made a play, but you know, CBS locked that up for good reason. Um, and nobody really excites me now because they all go to they all go to like broadcast school and they get all these things told them. That's why that's kind of what makes Romo so good is because he didn't go that route. They literally just brought him in for a test and said, "Yeah, you're great. Go." And every time he does a game, it feels like he's just hanging out with buddies. He doesn't even know he's on TV. He's just chatting, talking ball. You know, that's why he's so good. That and his knowledge of the game, obviously, it all works together. But so many of these guys who like the BC crew guys on color commentator, they are all like they've gone through the, the broadcast boot camp that they do out here in Jersey every year. And they've all like kind of worked with media coaches, et cetera. And it's like they're all just hammered into this cooker cut, this cookie cutter nonsense. It's just so boring. Um, any of the realistic paths, I'd I think Lewis Riddick would do a good job. I think Kurt Warner would be phenomenal. We've seen Kurt do a couple games now. Uh, when they've done the Monday night double headers. Um, and we've seen him do some stuff with NFL Network. I think he'd be phenomenal. Um, but ultimately, it doesn't really matter at this point. That's why Dennis Miller was so fun, or Howard Cosell, who was a you know, he was an entity of himself. Howard Cosell was like Charles Barkley before Charles Barkley, in that you kind of almost tuned in to see what he would say, you know? And the game was also happening. I don't know, man. It's it's just hard now because the guys are just like I said they're just milk toast. Uh, what's in the glass tonight? Uh, a alcoholic beverage. Hmm. Arthur is drinking a spotted cow. I am jealous of Arthur. Rob Domofsky said today that this year will prove who Matt Lafleur is as a coach more than his first year. Do you agree, Travis? I mean, it will suggest things. It will certainly continue to reveal things. I do think it will be interesting to see how things evolve, where he takes the program, what things he feels he can augment and or change and what he decides to leave in place that he thinks works and will continue to work. I don't think there's any sweeping generalizations you can take out of year two though. Um, certainly every year is another referendum on a coach and you're, the narrative around that coach is always evolving. Could it tell us more than last year? Yeah, of course. Um, he's more familiar with the squad. He's more familiar with the league around him and how things work. He's he's done more massaging of his coaching staff, etc. He's maybe had more input on who they draft and select in free agency, etc. So yeah, is it? A, it's an evolving process, and surely we'll have more information, and we'll see him make more decisions, and you will undoubtedly learn more about him. But yeah, to say it's like definitive. I, I don't know. And I don't know. I haven't read Rob's speech, so I'll have, to, I'll have to take a look. Bummed I missed trivia today. Well, Benny, the good news for you is we'll be doing it pretty much for the next month or two while everyone's shut inside. It's just something fun to keep people's minds off stuff and have a little Packers fun on the on the daily. Uh, do you hang out with Domofsky? Mark, when I'm in the same town as Domofsky, absolutely. I love Rob. He's one of the guys on the beat that I really get along with. Like him a lot. Um, it's funny, too, because there have been an influx of bloggers turned credentialed media members that Rob has thinly veiled uh, disdain for. Um, it, I was one of those people a long time ago. And, you know, we were talking, I think it was at the Combine. And, you know, he said uh, about the part about paying your dues and uh, knowing where you are and having to, like, Rob, if you haven't worked it for years and years and years, what Rob doesn't want to know. And I love that about him. Um, yeah, Rob's one of the good ones. And we, he, hey, he hung out with us, Corey and I, uh, this past summer 
at training camp. And I'm praying to God we have some form of training camp this year so we can do it again. Who do you think is going to be the next person to walk in free agency? Oh, Jamal Williams, most likely. He's the most obvious one. I think Kevin King has a chance to. You know, we'll see. Nicholas, thanks for the super chat. Can you do an online mock draft simulator for us making the Packers picks? No one wants to watch me. I'll just pick my favorite people that mean nothing. I mean, I mean, I, yeah, I'll, I'll maybe do it. I mean, hell, we're all cooped up here. Need content, right? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll figure something out. Um, I know that, speaking of content, I know there, NBC is showing the quote-unquote, you know, best of or whatever big time games on Sunday from Sunday night football. And in a couple nights, I think it's on the fifth. So it's next Monday, I think it is, or Sunday. I'm not sure. In a couple days, or maybe it's Sunday night, they are showing Favre's last start in Lambeau, which I was at. It was a Sunday night game. The Vikings came to Lambeau. Favre was the quarterback of the Vikings. That was a beautiful night. Um I, we may do something around that. I may do like some kind of live watch party. So stay tuned for that. If there's no audience for the draft, who's going to boo Goodell? They should have like a buzzer that somebody at the Lee office presses. <laughs> Would you be surprised if Chenault falls to the late second, early third round due to injury concerns? No. No, I wouldn't. Um, it reminds me of when I left Josh Jackson off my first round mock draft when I was writing for the Green Bay Press Gazette. And I got so many angry emails. Um, it turns out I was right. He didn't get selected until the second round. But he's, you know, I, I think that's a very similar case where I don't think the public consensus of that player is in line with what teams are looking at, injury being part of it. I think he's definitely going to be an exciting player in the NFL. I think he can definitely play in the league. But I do think the like I said, the public perception around him is a little higher than where teams have. That's just my guess. Thank you for everything, Extra Cheese. is a great stress reliever with all this craziness going on. Stay safe. God bless and go pack go and wash your butts, Tommy. I concur with everything you just said. All right, everybody. I'm going to I'm gonna jump. Thank you so much for all the questions. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to yours. Uh, please, like I said, we're doing live trivia every day, 530 Eastern or about. Uh, just check the YouTube channel for that. And hey, speaking of the YouTube channel, hit like, hit subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, Green Bay Packers fans worldwide, that's who we're devoted to. And if you really want to support what we do, please consider giving us $5 a month on our Patreon account, patreon.com slash cheesehead TV. Um, it really helps out, especially in these uncertain times. Uh, can't thank you guys enough for the support. And hey, if you can't do Patreon, totally understand, but hit like, hit subscribe. It means more than you know. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. Go Pack Go.